Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my final review on the newest Sigma lens. This is the 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 art series lens. And I've spent a, a quite a bit of time with this lens shooting in a variety of different situations. I've had a chance to compare it to uh, a few of lenses that I would certainly consider um, competitors, including the Tamron 15 to 30 millimeter f2.8 VC lens. And then adapting it on Sony FE, I've also done a comparison to a couple of prime lenses, and that includes the Loudwa 15mm f2, and then also the uh, Zeiss Battis 18mm f2.8 lens. And so in all of those comparisons, this lens has stood up really, really well. In fact, if you would like to take a look at the image quality comparison on the native Canon mount, this is an EF mount that I'm reviewing, and I reviewed it on the Canon 5D Mark IV. I would encourage you to take a look at this episode here where I cover a lot of the main features of the lens itself. To hit just a couple of those high points, what really stands out about this lens is that it is sharp from corner to corner. And um, it is unusually so, in fact. Usually, I find with wide angle lenses that they often will struggle at just the very edge portion of the frame. And in fact, you know, for example, the Tamron, a 15 to 30 millimeter f2.8, it's, it's very, very good in the center, but it's, it's quite a bit softer than the Sigma by comparison at the edge, the outer portion of the frame. Now, when I moved over to the Sony a7R Mark III to see how it would work via the MC11, um, I found that uh, a few interesting things there. Initially, I had some glitches, some issues with it, and uh, discovered that the MC11 needed an update to be fully compatible with the lens. And, and so initially, even if those of you that watched my Sony FE comparison, which you can see here, um, you noted that even as a part of the EXIF information, it wasn't displaying the lens information properly. Uh, fortunately, that part is solved um, by the update. I was also having issues with improper metering and the firmware update to the MC11 also solved that issue. Uh, I did still get an occasional bug slash glitch in which I would have, for example, the aperture resetting in between periods where I turned the camera off, it would um, kind of reset to an F8 value. That seemed to be the go-to. And so, you know, not a, a big deal, but it did mean that before I took the shot, I would have to often change the aperture if, if needed to the desired um, aperture. And so just a, a little bit of a quirk that I've not seen with other art lenses. I would say that this is something that Sigma probably will still address in a future firmware update either to the lens or to the MC11. Um, but anyway, uh, it, it's not a major thing, but just something to note that there was a glitch that did remain. The other thing that I did notice is that like uh, some other wide angle lenses that I've used via the MC11, including say the uh, Sigma Zone 14 millimeter f1.8 art, that while uh, focus confidence is really, really excellent with a lot of the um, other art series lenses, with the wide angle lenses, I did get a bit of pulsing, particularly if you have a wider zone selected. It's, it's almost like there's too much information there to select from, and maybe the, you know, the processing power of the MC11 doesn't immediately grab the correct result. And so I did find that if I narrowed down the target area, maybe to a, you know, a flex AF point that I got, um, you know, more confident, quicker lock on results instead of some pulsing. The good news is, is that whether it pulsed or not, I got very, very accurate results when it locked focus. And so the actual combination in terms of image quality is fantastic. I mean, great resolution. And this lens has awesome, awesome um, image quality, great resolution results. And so it's a very nice pairing there on the A7R Mark III. And so I certainly would utilize that combination despite those very minor glitches um, if I were to own the lens and use it between two systems. Now, uh, going back to the build quality for a second, I would encourage you to take a look at this episode here. There's a couple of things that I do want to highlight and maybe elaborate on from that. Uh, number one, this lens has a very, very familiar design. If you're uh, familiar with, for example, the 12 to 24 millimeter um, F4 uh, art lens, it looks very, very similar. Seem, it's extremely similar to that lens, and it weighs the exact same amount, in fact.
And and so you know the trade off there, of course, is you're getting uh, more glass, a you know maximum aperture of f 2.8 versus f 4. With the other lens, of course, you are getting a an extra two millimeters of focal length, and those two millimeters are going into extremely wide territory. I'll circle back in a moment and highlight why Sigma made both of these lenses that have such a you know serious overlap of um, focal length and who I think both of them are for. But first, in looking at the build, when uh, actually the, the 12 to 24 f4 was, I believe, the first of Sigma's wide angle lenses that I saw with weather sealing. I noted in that review, however, that the weather sealing was still not fully evolved at that point. And so it mostly was about some sealing at the gasket. I could tell even in physically handling the lens that the ceiling was more robust with the 14 to 24 art that I'm reviewing here. And after I did some further research, in fact, I did discover that it has received the grade of weather ceiling equivalent to Sigma's Sport series. In other words, it is the serious hardcore weather sealing, which includes not only sealing at the mount, but also sealing at various rings throughout there, um, you know, in the area where the front element merges into the housing at, you know, all of the key junctures, switches, or in this case, switch actually, the weather sealing there. And so this is a lens that really has the kind of robust sealing or ceiling that a lens like this should have because this really is much like the the Nikon or Nikkor 14 to 24 millimeter f 2.8 has been it's really probably going to be a lens used by a lot of serious landscape photographers that travel and uh, do trips like that it's probably going to see a lot of weather and so as a result it is um, it's obviously that's an essential thing for that so kudos to Sigma for really bumping up the weather ceiling on this lens the other thing that was a standout to me when it came to this particular lens as a Canon shooter is that this is the first of um, any third party lens that I've ever seen to get full support in the camera body for camera or excuse me Canon's um, lens profile correcting and so as a byproduct of that um, if you look under the lens aberration correction it has um, information loaded on the lens and supported in the camera for everything save Canon's digital lens optimizer and in fact using Canon's digital lens optimizer is really only suggested if you're planning on being very deliberate in your shooting because after you take the shot there's quite a pause while it kind of does all of that electronic trickery and then it writes the JPEG file to the card. And so it's quite a slow process. Beyond that, however, it, there is support for the peripheral illumination correction, the distortion correction, the chromatic aberration correction, and the diffraction correction. And I noted in the first image quality segment that um, there's really a great job that's done on the JPEGs and in particular I really particularly notice it with the peripheral illumination which delivers an extremely even um, lighting across the whole frame and I was very impressed by that result. So that was another uh, kind of standout thing when it came to the build. In operation the lens works well, the uh, zoom ring is nice, the focus ring works and you know as it should and so good results there. Another thing that I felt like helped to differentiate this lens from some previous Sigma Art Series lenses is that I felt like the, the coma performance, while maybe not the absolute top of the heap, was much better than what I've seen from any other Sigma lens to this point. Enough so that I would have no hesitation using this for Astro. I do still think that probably the best option is uh, the Rokinon Samyang Premium Series 14mm f2.4 lens. It's a really exceptional Astro lens, but uh, this lens is really not you know, super far behind. And so byproduct in all of this is, is that this is a really, really strong lens from Sigma. Um, it has very, very few flaws, very low chromatic aberration. Um, one thing that it does have is that, you know, Sigma touts that it has near zero barrel distortion at infinity. What that really means is that in the places that it matters, you know, namely if you're trying to shoot interiors, um, that it, it has more barrel distortion than what I would like. And at infinity is a place where distortion is rarely all that obvious anyway. That's typically more at landscape focal lengths. And frankly, it's not nearly as much of a factor where it's mostly a factor 
for my typical use is when I'm shooting architecture or interiors, which is typically at closer focus distances than infinity. And so as a byproduct of that, here's where I think the major differentiator is. There are a few people, and by the way, I think it's probably a very few people that actually need the wider focal range of the 12 to 24 millimeter F4 lens. Um, but some of those people that might need that are interior shooters, you know, maybe real estate shooters, or if like myself, you've done maybe some projects where you're shooting the interiors of hotels or public buildings, and you know, you have some commercial work to do that. Something that I've done a little bit of, having a lens that has very low distortion and a very wide focal length that will allow you to get as much of a room um, in, in one frame as possible is certainly um, you know, a desirable thing. And so I think that if you are a, a interior photographer and uh, you're shooting venues like that, you may prefer the 12 to, 12 to 24 f4. Um, particularly since a lot of times with that kind of work, you're going to be shooting off of a tripod anyway to make sure you get everything kind of as clean as possible. Um, but for if you're just looking more for a versatile wide angle focal length, uh, I think that the 14 to 24 f 2.8 is the way to go. It's going to be a better lens for landscape photographers. It's going to be a better lens for, as I've noted, those that are just doing um, landscape shooting and um, you know those that are um, not even just shooting weddings. Maybe you're doing photojournalism or things like that. This is a really desirable lens because it's just incredibly sharp. Autofocus in my experience has worked well. This is not a focal length and a, a maximum aperture that puts a huge strain on a uh, on a you know a focus system anyway but I have no hesitation no concerns it did a great job for me during my uh, focus period and so all in all this is a lens that I'm personally I'm I think Sigma has done a fantastic job on and so kudos to them and it's a lens that I think will make a lot of Nikon shooters um, say, hey, you know, here's a more modern version of the 14 to 24 millimeter focal length. And I think that in a number of ways it will um, better the Nikkor lens. And of course it, you know, it bested in price by a very good margin. At $12.99, I think this is an excellent value. And, um, and you know, of course, if you're a Canon shooter, there really isn't anything that's an exact comparison to this lens and so as a result it does get to, at least for the moment to occupy a somewhat unique niche and so all in all um if you are interested in this lens, I would recommend getting a pre-order in, you know, sooner rather than later, because I think that this is going to be a lens that has a fair amount of demand for it. Fortunately for you, you can find some pre-order links right down in the description below. You can also find linkage to my full written review that's supported by a lot of images. And of course, there's also a linkage to the image gallery where I've posted a number of photos there. And of course, you can find linkage in the description to follow me on social media, to become a patron, or to sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.